Hi there, YouTubers. Um, very exciting. I've got hold of a copy of Ableton Live 10. Um, so yeah, if you're a geek like me, then you get excited about such things. Uh, it's not due for release until the, the um, I think the official time is sometime in the first quarter of 2018. So what I thought I'd do is a series of videos uh, just basically going through in, in quite a lot of detail on all the new features so you know everything that you can expect when you get a copy. Um, you might want to use this to decide whether you want to upgrade from, I'm assuming most people are on Live 9 now, if you think it's worthwhile upgrading. Um, I'll, if anybody cares about it, I will give my opinion on what I think is uh, is good and what's not good about it, if there is anything. Um, and also, obviously, if you do then get a copy of it in the future, you can come back, watch these videos, and you've got a nice sort of documentation of all the new features to help you work it out and get your head around it all. So, um, I've just installed it. I've had a quick play about with a few things on it. Um, so, bear with me if I don't know everything straight away. And what I'm going to do is, because there's, there's obviously a lot of new features, some of them are quite small, some of them are, 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 are big new additions. Um, so, I'm going to split these videos up into quite a few short videos so they're manageable to watch um, and so on. So um, we first load it up you get this this demo so what I thought I'll do I'm just going to play this through and we'll have a look at some of the uh, the stuff that we've got in it and then I'll uh, I'll dive in so here we go. <laughs> Okay, so, uh, mm, sounds quite sexy. So on this drum kit, um, this is new, the drum bus we're using here. Uh, let's see what else we've got going on. It's pretty much all the same. The, this is new. Yeah, so this is the new wavetable synth, which we'll have a look at in more detail in a later video. Okay, I'm not going to play it all the way through because I want to keep the video as short as I can. But it's all right. Sounds pretty sexy that demo. Um, right, few things just so initial reactions. It, it looks a lot cleaner, a lot neater than uh, previous uh, version. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I've got Live Nine open as well. So I'm going to kind of go between the two. Um, so Aries obviously Live Nine, familiar to everybody. I thought that's on the disco thing. I'm going to just change that just to the uh, original one. Uh, I can never remember where it is. It's there. It's the default one. Okay, so we can compare the two. So there's Live 9 and there's Live 10. So um, yeah, it looks a lot neater. The The fonts are a lot clearer, particularly in the, the browser section. I like all of this. It looks just, just a lot crisper, really. Um, the tracks themselves are quite different, and I'm going to go through a lot of this in this video. Um, so if we look at it in the normal view here, we don't have the, the kind of the top thing as we had the top kind of um, name thing here as we had before. Uh, so that looks pretty different. You have this new view here, um, which is your automation view, which you can get in and out of with a uh, just pressing A on your computer keyboard. Um, and that then kind of, the, the clips look a lot more familiar to how they used to look there, but I'm gonna go through all of this um, over, I'm not sure if it's all gonna be in this video or this in the next, I'll see how long it, it lasts for. So let's dive in and I'm going to just go through each each section basically um, I think roughly in sort of alphabetical order of the new stuff. So we will start with arrangement editing. Um, so the first thing that has been added is I need to find a clip that is warped. I think this one is double click on it. Yeah, so this one has been warped. So let me just go back over here. Uh, and that's an Ableton Live warp clip. Right, first thing we can do then is any warped audio clip, we can now stretch it by holding down shift and then dragging out on the border. Um, obviously, if we, on the old version, okay, I'm holding down shift and dragging, 
Now, now what it does is it just copies it. Okay, it doesn't do make any difference to it. It's the same as just dragging it out like that. So we can still drag it out and duplicate it as before by getting the bracket thing over here. Okay, and that's just going to kind of repeat it. But if we hold down Shift, it will stretch it. Okay, so that's kind of like almost a bit of extra warping in here. So if you need to do some slight adjustments to your warping or you want to get some weird effects with stretching it, you can now do that straight in the arrangement view, which is pretty cool. Um, what else have we got? Right, we can also, and actually a lot of the new features um, I'm finding, I used to use before I converted to Ableton Live about four or five years ago. I was a massive fan and still like it, but I've never, I've not used it for years. I used Cakewalk Sonar. Um, and some of the new features in here actually remind me of that. And when I first went over to Ableton, I thought, oh, I missed that feature and that. And a lot of them are now in now, so I'm, I'm very happy. Um, so within our kind of clip boundary, if we hold down um, uh, Command on a Mac, I believe it is, and Alt on a PC, on PC, so I'm holding Alt, you can actually, no, no, let me get it right. No, hold on, that's not working. Just give me one second. Sorry, I'm doing the wrong thing. <laughs> That's coming up later. <laughs> right. What you can now do is you can move the, the clips along. Right. So previously you would gra grab hold of it and, and move it along. Let's go over to Live 9 and, and do that. Okay. And kind of one step at a time would move it along. You can now, if you've got a clip selected, you can use the left and right arrow keys. Uh, on your keyboard, which I'm now pressing, and you can see you can move it along, which is quite an, an easy way if you just want to shift it along to whatever the grid is. I've got it on half notes there. Let's say I set it to a bar. It's going to, where's it gone? There we go. Okay, it's going to shift along based on what your grid setting is here. You can get rid of that, uh, the, the snapping to the grid by um, holding down Command on a Mac or Alt on a PC. So if I hold down Alt, okay, it's going to, just kind of slide along really so i'm keep pressing if i keep pressing the button now you can see so if you just want to nudge it a little bit and not have it snapped to the grid hold down your alt or command key okay the next one is the one i thought I was doing previously which was wrong um what we can do is we can actually within these clip boundaries we can move the audio about uh, on a mac you would press alt and shift on a pc control and shift Okay, and then you get the little hand thing and you can actually move the audio within the clip. And again, that's going to be based on your grid settings here. So if we want to, let's go on 16th notes. Okay, so you can see I can move that now within the clip, which is pretty cool. So again, if you want to nudge it around or do other stuff, um, that's great. I like that feature. That's pretty cool. A um, couple of things, not massive things, but just quick shortcuts. You can now reverse your clip straight from you don't need to have this view open okay you can do it from here select it press the r button on your keyboard and it will reverse it which again is a quite good time saving uh thing you've not got to double click on it you've not got to go down here press reverse and so on just press the r button um you can also reverse a part of a clip now if we did this before Okay, so let's say down here, obviously the only way of reversing on Ableton Live 9 was to press reverse here. If I highlighted a section, let's say I wanted to reverse that and press reverse, it's still going to do the whole clip. Now I can do it from here. I can, oops, select a bit. Well, you've got to watch there's a new thing with the, as you probably noticed, with the cursor. The bottom half is your kind of selection tool and the top half is now your moving tool. So if I want to just reverse this middle section, just select what you want to do, press R, and it's going to just reverse that bit. Um, you can also, which is quite useful, if I put a, just a few automation lanes in, um, because this is just, again, another sort of time-saving thing. You can actually, if you're working in an automation lane, let's say down, let's say I've got loads of automation, and I want to reverse this section and I know it's a bit that I've automated and I don't want to kind of roughly guess where it is here. You can actually now kind of reverse from working down here, which is pretty good. Um, you can also deactivate from down there as well. So you don't have to always click back on your original clip. You can do all the work from the automation lane. Uh, what we got next? Uh, done that one. Uh, you probably just noticed then you can actually, if I go back to live nine, Let's just zoom in on a clip. 
If I selected a section here and hit the zero button, that deactivates the whole clip. We can now, let's get rid of that, we can now deactivate a part of a clip. So let's say I want to deactivate those middle two sections, highlight it, press zero, and that's going to just deactivate that little bit in the middle. Right, next one. So yeah, I just mentioned about the, uh, the, the cursor changing. So if you want to move a clip, you now have to put it in the top half like that and you'll get the hand and that will move it. The bottom half is now your selection tool, looping. So looping to activate is the same. So here we are in Live 9, Control L is going to loop it. Now if I press Control L again, it doesn't turn it off. You have to go up here and turn it off. Now you can toggle it on and off. Control L will loop it. Control L again will turn it off, which is Command L on a Mac, Control L on the PC. Um, next one. Now this is something I've been waiting for for ages, and this is something that Sonar I used to do, used to use, could do. Um, in Live Nine, and I know a lot of people used to moan about this. If I'm playing, um, if I'm some MIDI. Uh, bass is that MIDI? Yeah. Okay, so if I wanted to play, this is one big MIDI clip, okay, and Live 9 didn't have what's called MIDI chasing. If I wanted to play it from here, what I would have to have done was start it playing here, okay, like this. Which I'm not going to hear anything because I've not got the sound on for that, okay. I would have to start playing it from there, and then once it starts playing, I would then have to jump over to that bit to actually hear that. If I just clicked on here and started playing from here, you wouldn't hear those MIDI notes. You have to, it used to have to trigger the first note and then it would come in. We now have, let's all do a big fan for MIDI chasing, which is brill. Um, so I can now click anywhere. Let's just solo this drum track, which is all MIDI. If I click there, it's now just gonna play it from wherever I click, which is brilliant. I love this one. Because the other way just used to drive me mad. If you've got a massive MIDI clip, you used to have to click there, get it to start, and then if I want to hear this section, I would then have to click over there. Okay, so MIDI chasing, one of the best features yet so far, I think. Um, okay, we can also now, if I want to sort of import a, uh, this is a MIDI track. So if I want to import a MIDI clip into here, I can now do that from the create menu. We've got import MIDI file and that will import it and stick it wherever you have your line just there. We can do the same thing on an audio track. Just go into the create folder, import audio files. Again, that's a new feature that we didn't have before. Uh, a couple more and then I'm going to finish this one because this one's going on quite long. Um, we can now create, so in Live 9, if we wanted to create a new MIDI clip, we would have to highlight a section we wanted to do, we wanted to, um, that's we want two beats or whatever, uh, control shift M and it would give you a MIDI clip. What we can do now is I'm going to set my grid. So this is linked into whatever your grid is. If my grid is on two bars, I can just double click anywhere in a blank space here and it's going to create a MIDI clip based on your global quantize setting down here. So again, it's not a massive thing, but it's a little bit of a quicker way of creating a MIDI clip, which is quite nice. And the last one for this, um, I believe in Live 9, the um, envelope lock switch here. Uh, if you wanted to MIDI map it to a key, you couldn't do it. Now you can. So if I want to MIDI map that lock to I don't know my VB no my I don't know V key on my keyboard press V okay with your MIDI mapping on same method of doing it and then it's now let's turn it back up on there to need to get rid of that um my V key on my keyboard which I am pressing now you'll see will now toggle that on and off so I'm just gonna just get rid of that MIDI mapping. Okay so that is kind of a quick run through of the main changes though though the main new stuff on the arrangement editing um, part two, we're going to have a look at uh, automation um, a bit more. Okay, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that. Usual things, please like, subscribe to the channel and so on, share it around. Uh, there's some links to where you can hear my music on Spotify and so on. So any streams or downloads of that all supports me and helps me keep my channel going. Okay, thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Hi, so I thought I'd just do this extra quick bit of the uh, video on the end. Apologise for the sound quality, I'm uh, not in my studio at the moment. Um, just when I was editing the last video, I realised I didn't give a very good example on the MIDI chasing, um, because the one I played back basically was a drum loop, which doesn't really um, have a problem with the MIDI chasing, because you've got lots of separate notes. It's 
it's basically when you've got a, a MIDI clip like this. I mean, I've just put a massive clip in here, um, about 49 odd bars long, but just one long MIDI note in it. Okay, if I click on there, uh, let's just fold it so you can see it's just one long MIDI note. Now, in Live 9, if I, I'm just going to mute that, if I clicked anywhere in anywhere apart from the start, let's say I clicked here, you wouldn't hear it because it didn't have MIDI chasing. So let's turn it back on. The great thing now with Live 10, I can click start it in the middle. Okay, I can start anywhere and it will play almost like it's an audio uh, clip. You do have to turn that on in the options. It's down here. So if you turn Chase MIDI notes off, okay, and I click here, it's going to operate like it did on Live 9. Let's turn this up a little bit. So hopefully you can hear it when I do do it. Um, okay, so with MIDI Chase off, I would have to play it from the beginning and then if I wanted to hear this or skip to this section of the song I would then have to click along there that's how it worked in live 9 so now in 10 let's put the MIDI notes chase MIDI notes back on okay I can start it anywhere and you will hear it so hopefully that explains it a little bit better than it did in the previous video okay thanks for watching